Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new Analyst Angle. I'm Christophe Bertram, and I'm a principal analyst here at the Cube Research, and I'm very pleased today to be joined by Ranjan Singh from Kaseya. Ranjan, welcome. Yeah, Christophe, thank you for the opportunity. Real pleasure to be here, and uh, good to connect with you again. Uh, yeah, I'm the Chief Product Officer at Kaseya. I've been with Kaseya for just over uh, two and a half years. I'm uh, responsible for product development, which includes uh, R&D and product, as well as our infrastructure and security. Thank you so much for this quick introduction, Ranjan, and there's so much we could talk about, but you're the perfect person I want to talk to today. We're about eight days into this, uh, well, not what we call the crowd strike outage. Um, and really what I wanted to do is touch base with you because Kaseya has many service partners and many uh, end users uh, that uh, the company works with, and I wanted to see what you've been able to do to help them. But before we go into that, I just want to uh, remind people of the impact uh, that we saw. Actually, I have a couple of interesting research points I'd like to bring up here. Uh, first of all, uh, looking at uh, uh, a spot research that was conducted by a partner ETR uh, right around the time of the um, actual outage, what we saw is that everybody was impacted. Um, out of 100 people, 96% said, yeah, we saw an impact. So I think there's no question here. Uh, it was uh, a very important outage and it was global as we know. But what's interesting as I look at um, the second data point I wanted to bring up is the nature of the impact and the extent of the impact. And I think that's really what it's all about, right? At the end of the day, things happen. They will always keep happening in IT and that's fair, that's the way it goes. This being said, when it comes to this type of outage here, what we saw was that it was very significant uh, or extremely significant for a vast majority of people. 40% said it was very significant, 6% said it was extremely significant, which sounds really, really ominous. Uh, and as we know, uh, a lot of people, individuals who had nothing to do with uh, the actual IT component of this were affected. Consumers, uh, people you were stuck in the airport, uh, uh, you know, uh, medical appointments being delayed, uh, lab results not coming in. I mean, you talk about any part of the economy, uh, there was a big impact. So right. now that we have these data points in mind, I'd like to turn back to you, Ranjan, and really ask you what you saw and, and, and maybe start by telling us what happened from your standpoint. What was the nature of the outage and uh, what's, your, what's your quick analysis on what happened? Yeah, sure, Christoph, great question. And obviously a question that's top of mind for everyone. Um, uh, obviously the information that I have is, is based on, you know, what I'm reading on the internet uh, and uh, folks from CrowdStrike, of course, have published information. Put simply, here's what I understood that that's taken place. Um, CrowdStrike has a solution that, that's endpoint detection response solution that's deployed on various Windows-based machines uh, throughout the world and they pushed something called a content update uh, in, as opposed to a software update. What is the distinction? A content effectively pushes rules and things like that that the underlying software uses to analyze if something you know, uh, adverse is happening. So they pushed this content update. This content update uh, resulted in the underlying software executing in, in a certain way that caused the machines to go in a repetitive reboot cycle, if you like. Um, so essentially anywhere in the world, uh, a Windows endpoint that was running CrowdStrike software had the potential to be impacted by this. Um, CrowdStrike very rapidly pushed some solutions, also provided some remediation methods uh, that in many cases requires you to actually be physically present next to the endpoint in recovery. Uh, that obviously makes it very, very difficult if you have a lot of endpoints deployed that are not physically co-located with people. And even when they are, you're talking about thousands and thousands within an enterprise, et cetera. So it just adds to the recovery process in spite of the fact that recovery methods were available. Well, thank you for uh, working us through the, the nature of the problem and where clearly uh, it becomes uh, a scale problem as you identified thousands of endpoints or other systems affected, uh, a blue screen of death in constant loop. Uh, obviously, we saw all of these images from the news uh, with blue screens, uh, literally at airports. Uh, so I think uh, the net net is that uh, there has to be obviously a way to resolve this quickly and at scale, which is why we're talking today, because you are in the business of recovery. Uh, 
quick reminder on, on, on Kaseya, and I'm sure you can help us also through the portfolio, but just so that people remember that you cover a lot of ground in terms of software solutions. You work uh, extensively with uh, software providers, with uh, service providers. You provide solutions across the board from management of those endpoints and questions and, and other uh, systems, as well as, of course, disaster recovery and backup yeah. and recovery, which is really what I'd like to double click on here, Anjan. So uh, how are you able to help your service providers first? And because I guess they got the first call, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so Christoph, as you mentioned, uh, you know, Kaseya is a major provider of uh, IT and security software and solutions uh, and uh, primarily to MSPs, but also to uh, what we call internal IT teams. Um, one, one quick reference, Bertrand, uh, uh, Christoph, if you don't mind. Um, while this outage has been significant and it's impacted lots and lots of businesses and of course people and airports and so on, I think a perspective to have, which was also shared by our CEO, Fred Bacola, is that it also represents, if there is a silver lining or a positive aspect here, it's that it's become evident that security is more mainstream and security is being taken seriously. And that is why the CrowdStrike solution was, was present on so many endpoints. Um, if we had this situation five years ago, perhaps there wouldn't have been as much of an outage. So I think there is some silver lining in this positive aspects that security is more mainstream uh, certainly, our chief information security officer is, uh, you know, uh, is always advocating for this. His peers, et cetera, are always advocating for this. So I think there's a silver lining and a positive aspect. Having said that, it was a major outage. It, it significantly impacted a lot of businesses. Your chart demonstrates that. So uh, we were in a position to help our partners uh, in, in a number of ways. Uh, first and foremost, we simply put out a bulletin that it doesn't matter whether our partners were running our solutions or not, we are here to help. Uh, we, we sent out a bulletin and they can call in, uh, we, we put up a number and a contact and they could call our support organization and our support organization was ready and armed to help them in any capacity, whether it's as simple as executing the steps that were outlined or because we are a premium provider of uh, disaster recovery solutions and if they had been impacted, we could potentially help them in that regard as well. Uh, the second thing, since we are a provider of what is called remote management and uh, monitoring solutions, there is some uh, opportunity for automation, certainly for endpoints that are managed remotely. Uh, so we started working on, uh, if you like, a script and a solution that would enable customers to be able to boot these devices with a USB stick and, and do some remediation. So we were working on those solutions in case partners needed that. Subsequently, those types of solutions were available from other providers as well as Microsoft provided a solution as well. So, uh, so those are three different actions we took. First of all, support organization ready and available to help. It doesn't matter whether you're using our solutions or not. Second of all, a potential a boot option. And third, uh, you know, all those customers and partners that were using our disaster recovery solutions, of course, we could help them recover in select instances, not in all instances. Uh, mainly because if you have a remote endpoint uh, and, and you know you need it to be physically present to be able to support. Well, yeah, and that's really, uh, you know, when you really test the value of a partnership, when things go wrong, not when things are right and everything's humming and going right. fine, right? Uh, so uh, I think it's, it's great to hear. And um, given the number of end users who use your solution uh, as and solutions, I should say, as well as the number of partners. I imagine that the, the scale uh, of the problem uh, probably hit you uh, pretty much pretty quickly and uh, in a wide uh, sort of way. So uh, you're, you're a global organization. Uh, you have some strong presence in North America. Uh, can you just uh, walk us through, uh, when you talk about support, uh, maybe a couple of anecdotes you heard from the field on what they were able to do to get somebody back on their on their feet, whether a service partner or an internal IT team. Yeah, uh, one interesting thing around this, Christoph, is first of all we were ready and armed. We we were anticipating a flood of requests, either for simple support or for via uh, you know disaster recovery. Um, interestingly, we didn't get that many requests. Uh, however, the ones that requested clearly were working day and night uh, to restore these solutions. So 
what I would say is, uh, fortunately, um, and, and I don't know whether the system self-recovered or they weren't impacted in the first place, uh, but fortunately, a, a small subset of our partners were directly impacted. Um, a few anecdotes. Uh, I was uh, on a Teams chat with uh, one of our partners, and he had been up all night. Uh, you know, his customer base includes um, architecture firms and such, so he needed to get their, um, you know, their, their servers on premise because they host a lot of uh, biz line of business applications as well as some remote endpoints. So he had been up all night. Uh, we were discussing with him what are the various ways, you know, there's bit, there's this notion of bit locker keys that even if you, you know, boot in safe mode in Windows, you still need your bit locker keys. Uh, we have solutions actually that manage the bit locker keys. Um, so we were working with him directly how we can automate some of the scripting, some of the reading of the bit locker keys, and then subsequent remediation and checking to make sure those keys aren't being reused. We generate new keys, et cetera. So we, were, we helped him out in a couple of ways. Um, one with some automation scripting, post local remediation, and second of all, some validation with the keys and, and restoring of new keys. Uh, we also were able to, uh, we were working on providing him a boot device, uh, but he had already been on a restoration path and a process. Uh, so he said, Ranjan, no matter what, please work on that boot option because this will not be the first time this happens. Uh, so we are collaborating with him and a few other partners on making sure what makes sense beyond a simple boot option and how can we leverage the tools that Kaseya has, our documentation tools, our disaster recovery tools, so we can give them the one-click option should such a, such a situation arise again. Well, thank you for walking us through uh, these couple of examples. And I think uh, the you're right. It's only a matter of, of time before the next one happens. Luckily, this one was not ransomware, which would have made things even more complicated. So uh, in closing, Ranjan, just uh, maybe a, a quick uh, set of recommendations for our viewers. Yeah, um, I, I think of it, Christoph, in three dimensions. First, as a provider of IT and security software, it behooves us that we take every step and measure uh, to ensure that you know defects and bugs like this don't materialize in the field. Uh, I also believe it's a question of when, not if. Uh, software is far from perfect. I'm pretty sure CrowdStrike took every measure, and I know they've published some things, they, they found some gaps, but like every other software provider, we take every measure to ensure, right from our architecture to the product development process to the release process, You know, using rings and such methods to make sure that we test any updates and software in small circles. So that's part one. Part two is, you know, anticipating that these things can happen. So making sure that we have tools and support process and internal procedures ready, whether it impacts us directly or impacts our partners. So we are ready to support them no matter what. And to be able to ensure and run through scenarios, similar to BCDR scenarios, run through these scenarios that we can do this at scale. Because that was the, one of the big problems here. This is at scale. If you impact a small percentage of machines, most organizations can scale very well. But if you have such a wide impact, that's so, so having processes and procedures that, that can operate at scale is key. And then the third element is there is no substitute for backup and disaster recovery. Um, it is the first dollar spent. It is the last line of defense. Thankfully, as you say, this is not a ransomware incident. But it might, you know, the impact is just similar, apart from the fact that you have to pay somebody and, and recover some keys, the impact is widespread. And this is what backup and disaster recovery exists, to be able to help customers and partners recover from these situations. Well, these are uh, great words of wisdom, Ranjan. I uh, could not agree more. Well, thank you so much uh, for spending the time with us today. I know that you'll see a lot of your end users at uh, upcoming conferences uh, in the next few months. Uh, so uh, certainly I'm, I'm, I'm expecting to see some sessions on uh, best practices and uh, exactly uh, what you described, which is you know how to recover at scale. So with this, I'd like to thank you, Ron John, and I'd like to thank everybody here for watching, and we'll see you on the next Analyst Angle. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Christoph, and thank you, everyone.